Hi everyone, welcome back to part two of my top financial advice for anyone financially planning and preparing for a baby. Now, if you've had a baby, I would greatly appreciate it if you could share your best bit of budget saving, money saving advice for all the other new and expectant mums. You never know how much your little tip or trick can help another mother. And I think it's so incredibly important as a community that we be open and transparent and share all our love and knowledge because it really does make a huge difference. All right, so continuing on from yesterday's video, my next tip is entitlements. Find out what government entitlements are available to you. I remember when I had Rocco, I didn't realize until last minute that I actually was entitled to some family tax benefits. Now this wasn't a huge amount of money, but it definitely helped. And if I didn't know about it, I wouldn't have actually bothered applying for it. So my advice is whilst you have a little bit of spare time, try and do some research into what you might qualify. Find out the different types of government support, how much it might be, and of course, what are the limits and thresholds and the process to apply for it. Even if it's just a small amount, it can really help make a big difference, especially when you use that help wisely. My next tip is probably one of the most important bits of financial advice, second to budgeting when it comes to planning and preparing for a baby. And this is particularly focused around mothers, and that is your superannuation. Whilst you're on paid maternity leave, you will still get your superannuation contributions or a reduced amount of superannuation contributions depending on how you're paying paid. But after an extended period of time, if you're not returning back to the workforce or going to be delaying it, it is so incredibly important that you do not neglect your superannuation account. Try and go back to that family budget and see if there are ways that you can incorporate a regular contribution plan so that you can either cover or make up some of those missed superannuation contributions. Now, I'm not gonna bang on about it in this video, but I've mentioned previously the superannuation gap between men and women. And one of the main reasons is because we step out to, of the workforce to raise a family or take care of other family members, and so much of our work is unpaid, therefore we don't get any superannuation payments and our super suffers hugely. So even if it's only $10 per week or $20 per week that you can afford to contribute to your superannuation account, it is better than nothing at all. And also I highly recommend talking to your spouse or partner and seeing if they can also help cover the loss of superannuation payments whilst you are raising a family. And in Australia, we even have a spouse contribution where if your spouse contributes to your super up to a certain amount, they also may get a fairly decent tax rebate. So stop and take the time to look at the impact in not contributing to your superannuation and see what you can do to try and bridge that gap as much as possible. My next tip is around gifts. Now, I promise you I'm not telling you to go and ask people to buy you a whole pile of things as nice as that would be. But if someone special to you says, look, I'd really like to be able to buy something for you or the baby. Is there something you would really like? Make sure you tell them something that you actually need, something you've been maybe saving up for or would love it if they could help you buy or something that you're running low of or you know that there's going to be something that is coming up that's expensive that's going to put a bit of financial stress and pressure. You don't need to ask them to buy the whole thing, but even if they can help in some way, contribute, it will make, help take the pressure and stress off your shoulders. And of course, gifts do not need to be monetary gifts that cost expensive things. Even if someone says to you, look, I would really like to get you something, but I'm on a tight budget myself, maybe they could offer to babysit um, for a couple of hours in replacement of a gift. That's gonna save you money as well. So get creative with gifts and also don't be afraid to ask for gifts that are second hand. If someone has a particular budget, it may mean that you can get more stuff because you're getting second hand things which is so much better value for money. Tip number four is something a bit personal and it's probably gonna be sound a little bit controversial in the way I explain it, but I'm gonna try and do it in the best way possible. Try and include a gym membership that has, or a community membership that has a creche service included. Now, I know that when I had Rocco, I had very bad postnatal depression um, and post-traumatic stress syndrome. And sometimes I just simply needed a extra set of hands, someone that could take Rocco for an hour so I could get some breath share, um, you know, maybe do some exercise because that would then help me feel better and be a better mum. 
So my gym membership, Virgin Gym, actually has an amazing creche facility and it costs $10 per week um, per child and you can use it every day if you want for a maximum of two hours. Now I'm not saying I'm going to use this every day for two hours, that's crazy, but of course that's totally fine if you do want to do that. But all I'm doing is suggesting it as a very cost effective way to get help or access to someone else that can give you just a short break so you can pull it together if you're having a bad day. And as we all know, everyone has bad days, not just mothers of newborn babies. Tip number five is to borrow things, swap things with friends, or rent them. You don't necessarily need to go out and buy that item. As we all know, some things you only need for short periods of time. So if you can borrow a particular car seat from a friend, that is fantastic. That's gonna save you a couple of hundred dollars instantly. Also, I mentioned the Cash Rewards website and how I get Cash Rewards back on my own shopping for both grocery stuff and for baby stuff as well. But there's also a business within the, the Cash Rewards program that actually allows you to rent a whole range of different baby needs equipment. Now, one of my girlfriends has very kindly offered to lend me her breast pump. So that is one thing that I definitely do not need to buy, definitely one cupboard that I do not need to fill up with stuff. And I am so incredibly grateful because breast pumps can be incredibly expensive. Tip number six is to use what you already own. For example, those beautiful, cute baby towels. Well, you know what? They're just the same as your own towels that you and the rest of your family members use. You don't necessarily need to go out and buy a whole pile of baby towels. Also have a look at what toys do you have? Rocco has very kindly gone through all his toys and set aside some special toys for Apple that he gets to give. And this is a really healthy skill for your older children, if you have older children, to help develop in it, letting things go and also that passing down of, of special things to your children. So you don't need to go out and buy a whole new pile of building blocks or Lego or soft toys. Baby Apple already has a fantastic collection of teddy bears waiting for him or her. And then my final tip, which I think is my third top financial tip for planning and preparing for financially for having a baby, and that is using the public healthcare system. Now, I am having a baby not through the private service, but through the public service. So it's pretty much costing me close to nothing. I don't have any $8,000 obstetrician bills or um, surgical bills and everything has pretty much been bulk billed, including the regular checkups with my GP. Now, having a baby and which path you want to choose, there's no wrong or right. It's obviously what is best for you. But I definitely know by me being really open and transparent about using the public system, owning it and talking about the great experience I had with Rocco when I used the public system, I've had a lot of mothers come up to me and say that they decided to also do the public system and have saved themselves between eight and $10,000 by doing it. So consider all the different options. You don't have to go to the top obstetrician or the obstetrician of the stars. The public system in Australia is fantastic, but I understand it's incredibly personal and also it depends on where you are because you may not necessarily live nearby a public hospital. But have a look at all the different options, particularly the shared care, which really helps bring down the costs of all those appointments and scans and so forth. And on that note of going through the public system and the shared care, I always ask my GP when I'm going for a checkup, whether the scan or the test or the blood test that I do, I ask him if he could put on the on the um, instructions that it be bulk billed. And he always says, yes, no problem, that's perfectly fine. And so saving money there has really probably been one of the biggest impacts in helping Tom and I financially plan and prepare for this baby. Now, as mentioned in my previous video, my book Mindful Money has a chapter solely dedicated to children and money, teaching children how to understand money, teaching children how to invest, but more importantly, or like teaching how to actually start investing on behalf of your children, the most tax effective way, the best way to build a diversified portfolio for them and all the different ideas to help you financially plan and prepare for children's expenses such as education. So if you haven't pre-ordered a copy of this book, I highly recommend you jump online and do that because it's a really helpful chapter. And of course, not only is it gonna help 
your children, but it's also going to help you because there is so many amazing bits of information and ideas and strategies that both Tom and I use together as a family to get ahead financially, but also to help reduce financial stress in the family and make the most out of life so that we then have more time and energy to put into our family. All right, everyone, I really hope that you've enjoyed these two videos. If you know anyone that is having a baby and doesn't know what to do financially, please make sure that you forward these two videos to them because as Rocco always says, sharing is caring. All right, everyone, don't forget you can follow me on Instagram at SugarMamaTV and for my personal account, which is a lot more open and transparent and unfiltered um, at Canna Sass. Have a great every week, everyone, and I will see you next week. Ciao.